This demonstration is known as the leaky capacitor. It is used to show you what happens when a capacitor fails within a circuit. Since capacitors are made of dielectrics and dielectrics are imperfect, a capacitor has an operational lifespan. In order to show you what happens when a capacitor fails, we have created a situation where we have a circuit that charges our capacitor and a circuit that discharges our capacitor. Within the charging circuit, we have a power supply that is set as a, at approximately 20 volts. That is in series with a switch, capacitor, resistor, and current meter. Because we have a capacitor and resistor in series, we have a time constant to how long it takes this capacitor to charge to maximum capacity. If we close this switch, we will be able to observe the voltage on the capacitor as well as the current supplied to the capacitor um, as the capacitor charges. If we close the switch and allow the capacitor to charge, you will see the voltage is increasing over time and the, the current is decreasing over time. And once the current value has reached approximately zero, that's when you know the capacitor has indeed fully charged. I will now open the switch and you'll see that there's approximately 19 and a half volts on the capacitor. To discharge our capacitor, we have created a circuit where we have a parallel capacitor and resistor that has a current meter attached and a switch so that we can turn it on and off whether or not we want to um, drain our capacitor. If we represent our capacitor as a bucket of water, basically the bucket is allowed to hold only so much water, which is equivalent to the amount of charge that the capacitor can hold. When the capacitor has failed, you get a constant bleed off of charge, which can be represented by a hose that is connected to the bottom of a bucket. As long as there is some sort of charge on the capacitor, some of it can indeed leak away and dissipate somewhere else in the circuit. Depending on the diameter of this hose will determine how quickly the water would drain out of this bucket. That is equivalent to determining the value of the parallel resistor that is to the capacitor. Now if I allow the capacitor to discharge through the parallel resistor, this is a small R value resistor, you will see that the capacitor discharges very quickly. If I then change my parallel resistor to a very large R value, you will see that the capacitor takes a much longer time to discharge. When the parallel resistor is small, that is equivalent to the diameter of the hose in the bucket to be very large. This allows the capacitor to drain very quickly, as you had seen in our previous example. In contrast to that, when the resistor is very large, that is equivalent to the hose having a very small diameter, meaning that it takes a lot longer for the capacitor to discharge, which again we have seen in our example. If we engage both the charging and discharging portion of our circuits, and allow them to come to equilibrium, we would be able to quantify the amount of leakage that occurs off of the capacitor. When we engage both the charging and discharging circuit, there will be a point when the capacitor has reached an equilibrium. As you can see, when we have a large parallel resistor, the voltage on the capacitor is roughly 17 and a half, with a current of 0.18 amps. If we then repeat the experiment with a small resistor value for the parallel resistor, we will see that the equilibrium value for the input versus the output current flow is different. The voltage value is only 0.6, but the current has increased to 1.8 amps, showing a larger current flow for a smaller parallel resistor.